Yo, 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 with your boy Peter, and today we will be talking about African sleeping sickness, otherwise known as trypanosomiasis. So, what is trypanosomiasis? Um, trypanosomiasis or sleeping sickness is an infection caused by germs carried by certain flies and it results in swelling of the brain as a complication. And the causative agent is by a protozoa known as Trypanosoma brucei. And then there are two types. We have the Trypanosoma brucei gambiense and the Trypanosoma brucei rhodiense. And they occur in different parts of Africa. Trypanosoma brucei gambiense occurs in the western part of Africa and then go into the central part of Africa and some areas of the north and the trypanosoma brucei rodiente occurs in from central going down to the eastern part or the southern part of africa we would find this i'm not very very uh, particular about the area but it's just a general overview so it's also important to know that the trypanosoma brucei gambiense causes over 98 percent of uh, reported cases and it's transmitted by the bite of an infected tsetse fly. So that's the name of the insect that is responsible for the transmission of the African sleeping sickness. So the life cycle of the Trypanosoma species is kind of like a little bit complex, but I will try to go around it. And forgive me if I'm not able to pronounce some of uh, the words. So first of all, the tsetse fly takes a blood meal. When it takes a blood meal from a human, it injects what is known as the metacyclic trypomastigotes. These metacyclic trypomastigotes are actually the, uh, the protozoa that it injects into the blood. The injected metacyclic trypomastigotes then transform in the bloodstream into, tri into the uh, the trypomastigotes which are carried to other sites like so from metacyclic trypomastigotes they then transform into trypomastigotes and then they multiply and then they are taken into various body fluids like the blood the lymph the lymph and then the spinal cord and different parts of the body and then they come back into the blood when they come back into the blood another set of fly takes a blood meal when taking a blood meal, it then takes the bloodstream trypomastigotes and ingests it. After ingesting it, it then transforms again into procyclic trypomastigotes in the tetra fly's mid gut. The procyclic trypomastigotes then multiply even more. And then the procyclic trypomastigotes leave the mid gut of the tsetse fly and transform again into epimastigotes. These epimastigotes then multiply in the salivary gland of the tsetse fly and then they transform again into metacyclic trypomastigotes and the cycle repeats itself. Another tsetse fly takes a blood meal and keeps injecting and it repeats itself again and again and again. So, it is also very, very important to know that the vector includes mother to child infection. So the, the infection of the uh, trypanosome can sometimes cross the placenta and infect the fetus. And uh, we should also know that laboratories accidental infections, for example, through the handling of blood of an infected person and organ transplantation, uh, you know, we could have infection spreading like this. Although this is not so common, but it happens and then blood transfusion. The same way um, HIV is spread and other infections like hepatitis B. The signs and symptoms of African sleeping sickness include anxiety, mood changes, fever, headache, weakness, insomnia at night. Because it is also very, very, very important to know that the African sleeping sickness affects the circadian rhythm 
of the brain so in other words there is a disturbance in sleep cycle so you would have insomnia at night and sleepiness during the day and it might be uncontrollable sleepiness there would be sweating the lymph nodes would be swollen all over the body because of generalized infection and there will be swollen red painful nodule at the site of the fly bite it would be swollen and painful so the examination and test includes blood test cerebrospinal fluid test that is this fluid the fluid from your spinal cord and then we could also order a complete blood count to check for the amount of white blood cell count which would lead us to a diagnosis of an infection and then we may also get some fluid from the lymph nodes you know sucking up that fluid the treatment of african sleeping sickness well we should know that some medicines which are used in this kind of uh, disease include eflornithine but eflornithine is used for the treatment of uh, trypanosomiasis or trypanosoma uh, brucei gambiens only we also have melasopro we have pentamidine used for the treatment of trypanosoma uh, brucei uh, gambians only as well and when then we also have sumarin and some people may receive a combination of these drugs uh, for the treatment of uh, African sleeping sickness the outlook well without treatment it should be known that death can occur within six months from cardiac failure from trypanosoma uh, brucei rodiense infection itself then trypanosoma uh, brucei gambiense infection causes sleeping sickness disease and gets really worse quickly often over a few weeks so it's very important to know this and well the complications possible complications will include injury related to falling asleep while driving or during other activities gradual damage to the nervous system and the brain uncontrollable sleep as the disease gets worse and this could lead to coma these are possible complications of course hence the name sleeping sickness the prevention well, prevention can be by taking pentamidine injections to protect against trypanosoma uh, brucei gambiense, but not against trypanosoma brucei rodiense. So, you know, these two organisms have preference for certain medications. Insect control measures can help prevent the spread, and that's the most effective. So, it's very, very important to make sure we... Um, we take very active measures to towards uh, sanitary conditions and improving hygienic standards and all those other things the spreading of african sleeping sickness uh, has been around the sub-saharan part of africa many of the affected populations live in remote rural areas with limited access to adequate health care services in the last 10 years or maybe even more over 70 percent of reported cases occurred in the democratic republic of congo so this disease would occur in you know very rural parts of the tropical regions of the world for example in parts of africa that lack very very adequate healthcare services and proper sanitary measures but right now things are changing and we are not seeing so much um occurrences of this disease as much as it used to be in the past but we still need more work to be done and so with that just a general overview of african sleeping sickness and i say thank you and see you next time